Well, here we go. Back to our original what this is all about. This is all about, uh, well, my, I guess you call them my audio memoirs. Oh, let me look. Oh, let me look presentable. I don't know why I'm looking presentable. Because I purposely just let my beard grow out and rough. Because I'm, I want to take this picture. These other two guys just want to take this picture. And so I want to look, I suppose it look gruff, but I guess they're looking too neat. Now let me leave it. Um, uh, because what I do is, um, basically it's an audio memoir. I'm supposed to be recounting my life as it's happening. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Anyway, the part of the thing is uh, I had a reading yesterday. But before I get to that, uh, I had left a kit here. Um, uh, I'm at my my brother's house in, in Harlem. I left I left the kit here uh, to do a, a colonoscopy. I suppose I have it done, but things things happened and I couldn't get it together. So, but I'm not, really not going to do it. At least not right now. I have to wait. Maybe next year or something like that. I'll see what happens. Um, but I was noticing, uh, like uh, they say, they give you your uh, plan your diet for the day before the procedure. So. It's supposed to be a fasting a day before, I guess, something like that. But then they give you these options. Check this out. This is the medical establishment. Breakfast, one. Uh, it says pick one. Eggs, two eggs. Uh, yogurt, uh, eight ounce, no fruit. Cheese, two slices. Uh, cottage cheese, one cup. And then this is still breakfast. You pick one of those, and then you pick from this list. Uh, toast, two slices, white bread, uh, a plain bagel, or English muffin. And then the third, then the third, pick one, and this is still a breakfast menu: butter, olive oil, or cream cheese spread. Excuse me, it's the morning. I, I sort of expire everything in the morning. Uh, okay, that's breakfast. Then lunch. I actually only eat, eat, eat like two meals a day, but let's let's say they say lunch. Oh, this is them. Here we go. Pick one, lunch meat, six thin slices of turkey, chicken, or ham, uh, chicken, nuggets, five, uh, yogurt, eight ounce, no fruit, until you pick one of those, and then from the second column, white bread, two slices, white rice, half a cup, pretzels, half a cup, and then the third thing is uh, pick one, butter, olive oil, or ice cream, half a cup, no nuts or fruit. That's lunch. Dinner. This is their recommended thing uh, the day before. Or my, they say they died the day before the procedure. I don't know about that. Dinner. Pick one. Chicken breast, three ounce or six thin slices. Chicken nuggets or macaroni and cheese cup. Then the second second on the, on your plate. Pick one, baked potato, no skin, pretzels, half a cup, white rice, half a cup. And then you pick one for this third, this third column. Uh, butter, olive oil, or ice cream, half cut, no nuts or fruit. Now this is the, this is what the VA gives you. This is less to say, let's call it the medical establishment as a sanction, as a, well, the VA listens to the medical establishment. This is what they suggest you put in your your body before your colonoscopy procedure. You know when they put the camera up your your yazoo and you know see if they get some polyps there. Well, so much for that. Oh, by the way, I guess the way I'm trying to bring this up, I one of the people because of COVID. I'm trying, trying to look good for you guys. I don't know what, what what's happening here. Uh, I'll stop looking good. Uh, one of the things that uh, for COVID because what happened COVID it sort of activated. Um, my um, my medical background, as it were. Uh, I used to be a lab tech. Oh, don't worry about all that stuff. Anyway, I know how to read a medical paper. I know how to read a research paper. And uh, I'm just generally uh, pretty intelligent in the area of medicine, let's put it that way. And there's a lot of people, people don't understand, just because you're a doctor, I mean, you could be a doctor of blah, blah. You could be a doctor of blah, blah. You could be a, you know, you could be a surgeon. You could be, like that doesn't mean you're a specialist in whatever field, right? So research doctors are a little bit different. Let me leave that alone. But here's the thing. I listen to uh, Dr. Campbell a lot. He's, he comes from, through the nurses' uh, strain of, of, of doctors. And um, he just got this thing about uh, what the, what do you call those people? 
uh, I guess you'd call them, well, the, re the recommendations, uh, let me put it this way, the UK, right, they now have gotten, for lack of a better term, in bed, um, the, the Moderna, the vaccine people, they got in bed with the UK, with the, the UK government. And so there's a partnership where the UK government is actually uh, the agents of Moderna. There's no rhyme and reason why that should happen. There was no, there was no, uh, see, there was no bartering. There was no, oh, this is, it, there's no explanation for this. Uh, my explanation, of course, is that uh, what happens is a lot of money to be made, a lot of money to be made. And what happens if, if the medical, somebody can buy the government, can buy the government task out for their own profit, then what they do, they partnership with the government for their own profit. So good luck to you folks who keep on listening to people who say they they have doctors and thing, but they, they haven't practiced medicine. They know nothing about the medicine that they're talking about, blah, 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 blah. But I'm not going to jump on them. So I just wanted to get that out. Oh, um, I got some coconut water. Some coconut water. I was drinking it last night. on this, uh, well, forget all that neutral electrolytes. But I usually don't do this, but whatever. Instead of pure coconut water, and this is uh, gluten-free and all the rest of this stuff. Uh, but one of the things, it's, uh, where's the stamp? It's a product of, uh, I read, I know, I know already. It's from the coconut from Brazil. I like the ones from Brazil, like the ones from Puerto Rico, like the one, the coconut water from uh, 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 Vietnam the most. Um, so this is one of those things, ingredients that are produced, uh, produced in New York, gluten-free. But this one, I didn't do this, I, I swear, but it says coconut water, pineapple. Okay, I, I suppose it's pineapple flavoring, but I don't care. I sort of like this. I sort of like it, so I take a hey, look at that. It got a little cup, a little blue in it. That blue is important for me because I had a reading yesterday. Uh, this is not just a normal reading. Reading, I should tell you this. Um, I scheduled the reading. Well, hmm. Oh, wait a second. Hmm. Oh, oh, good. Oh, I like this. Oh, I like this. Oh, too bad. It's coconut with pineapple. I know it's, I know it's probably not good, but no, nah, I'm sick of my regular coconut water. Okay. So I had scheduled this reading before I left for Canada. I just came back from, just came back a couple of days. Came back from Canada. I did my little train trip that I really always wanted to do, and um, I had scheduled this to pick up a, a deck of cards from John Mason, the eminent um, uh, or Yoruba scholar. A Yoruba culture scholar that would include Khan and Blade, well, Yoruba, uh, well, uh, the whole Orisha thing, you know, up 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 through um, up through North America it became a Santeria. So he he's a scholar and all that thing. He got a whole bunch of books. He's top of the field. Let's put it that way. So I had scheduled because I wanted to pick up some cars to bring to La Jota House, uh, where, where where my little community center that I'm building uh, is, and because I got some other stuff, got a puzzle before. And I said, well, I figured, I said, well, while, if I'm going to pick this up anyway, and I'm bad passing through town because I knew I was only going to be here a couple of days. Then we just say, oh, John, can I have a reading? You know, because he's a Europa scholar. He's a, actually, he was a diviner before he was even in the culture. He was a diviner since he was a kid. Oh, a kid, but, you know, young, young man. Anyway, um, so it ends up uh, that uh, he made an appointment, blah, blah, blah. Be there at 2 o'clock. Uh, we end up talking a long time because, well, he knows me. It, He's known me for a long time, and he's even witnessed uh, some of my audio dramas, you know. He knows what I do, okay? He sort of knows my background for a long time, you know, because I've known him since. Actually, he concentrated. He, he gave me this thing when I started the Unsequestered Monk Tour. He gave me a reading, and it was the whole things I had to do. Uh, that was interesting. And I just ended the Unsequestered Monk tour after, what, 19 years, and I'm now on a Mystic Wind tour, so he gave me a reading now, so this is kind of interesting, my little... Well, that doesn't make any sense to you, but it makes sense to me, don't worry about it. Anyway, so my appointment was at 2 o'clock, I figured I'd pick up the things, you know, but you know, we ended up talking. He a talker, right? I can listen to John Mason, but every time, you know, let me put it up, sometimes I get... He's a he's 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 cantankerous. Let's put <laughs> let me not label him because then I'll be in all kinds of trouble. Let let's put it this way. I say stuff I get under his skin. Sometimes I say stuff. That, don't worry about that either. Okay, but the point is, uh, 
So that's two o'clock. Appointments at two o'clock. Uh, you know, we start talking three o'clock, uh, two o'clock to three o'clock, right? Then three o'clock to four o'clock, four o'clock to five o'clock. Then somewhere in there, I guess, uh, yeah, five o'clock, five o'clock to say five thirty. Anyway, somewhere in there, I know I had to, went upstairs and had the reading, right? Five o'clock to six o'clock. I got out there at seven o'clock. So John Mason, eminent scholar, spent five hours with me. We just talking back and forth to finally get the reading where I don't talk. It just, you know, blah, blah. Whew, it's exhausting, you know, but just for um, a man of that eminence to take some time with a little old me, right, that, that gives me a sort of respons <laughs> responsibility. So I got to, I got to step, well, my game is stepped up. I got to step up even more. I got to cockatize some stuff, right? But here's the interesting thing about readings and stuff like that. Like I use, uh, I just said five, that's a uh, number of, number of five, think of it extreme. So that was, I had an extreme talk with John Mason five hours right i go by numbers a lot you know but that it's like paul against me something happens and then i might check the number afterwards i don't say oh i'm gonna talk to john mason for five hours because blah 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 that's not how it works right but i also with the yoruba culture um i was i was sort of i have a relationship with the culture but i'm not in the culture right and so i get readings every well i ain't had a reading in a long time no, was, no, I had a reading with, with David a while ago, but it was for something else. But this was like a complete kind of reading. And so I have this reading, and what really comes out is everything that's said, I'm doing anyway. See, in other words, I, I'm, I'm in my flow. So that's not the issue. There, well, there's no issue, right? But uh, because of readings, then then I get um, I get things to do, right? To uh, Again, to concretize um, my path, if you will, or, or what I'm doing. So I got some very, very useful, extremely useful things that I should do. And I'm going to execute them when I get back to my landmass, when I get back to Dimbaza. So I'm a happy, I'm a happy chappy, you know. I'm very happy chappy. So that's it. I want to tell you about that. And uh, things, uh, things, as I like to say, are going swimmingly well. Uh I finish up here to well tomorrow morning about this time I should be on a, a train to uh, to uh, to Virginia visit my sister and my my uh, say new yeah but I have a my new well, my sister has property I have a I always have a room where my sister is you know what I mean or presence it's my legal address and when I'm in the states right um, and it's a new property it's by a lake so it's really good because I get and I can hang my hammock oh. This is gonna be wonderful. So I, I'll, I'll I'll have that in Virginia, and then then I guess I'm there for uh, three weeks. Yeah, say about three weeks, and then I head off to my uh, you know to for, to Cape Town uh, to help some uh, to assist some young people and 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 in delving more into journalism. Uh, that's on schedule. Some other stuff will probably be happening. Then I go to do an audio drama workshop. Oh. This is I got. I'm got to start writing. I'm, I'm going to leave New York and get to Virginia. Get to the, my my uh, set up there. And start writing. That's going to a different kind of workshop. I do a different workshop each time with audio drama. I'm an audio dramatist. Did you know that? I'm at the top. The top. The tippy tippy tippy. Hey, I'm not even at the tippy. I'm I'm, I'm good at my field. Okay, in my field, I'm like the best. Okay, no, no, no enough. I can't even see my back to the pack for myself. But see, that comes from, let me say something. That comes from radio. See, when you've done radio long as I have, back in the old days when you had to do tape, you know what I mean? You, you're splicing tape and you're, you're trying to put a program together and you got a piece of tape over here hanging off your shoulder. You got a piece of tape hanging off the, the scully over there. You have a piece of tape over there. Then, then you say, oh, what, what's that thing? And you got to put it together. But then, then it finally comes together and you listen to it. You know, anyone that's like three o'clock in the morning, you know? <laughs> You the only one that knows your accomplishment. So what happens? You say, oh, you feel so good. You know, you're thanking God, praising the loafy. I mean, you're, you're all, but you're the only one in the studio. So nobody knows your, nobody knows your great accomplishment. So this is what it's like to be a the audio dramatist that I've came through, right? So and also the same thing with writing. Well, don't worry about that part. But so when I joke around, say I'm patting myself on the back, nobody knows the accomplishment that, that happened or that why I'm patting myself on the back. Okay, so I, I, I done talked at you a, a bit, you know, too much probably.
I'm, talking about, I'm not talking at you. I'm, this is my audio memoirs. I gotta, you know, get this stuff down because I'm an old man. And since people don't, people, here's the thing. Here's what I'm trying to say. Well, here's what I did. Here's what I want done. I keep on telling young people to, you know, tape their older people. You know, like like their their, their grandparents and their great grandparents while they're still alive and get some information on it. Of course, nobody listens to me, right? Because I'm, I'm an archivist at, at heart. I'm a, I'm a recordist archivist at heart, right? At least in audio, at least in radio. But now I come up with this thing, you know, well, now because of technology, I can, I'm an elder, I can talk to myself. <laughs> Since nobody wants to talk to me, I just, or interview me and my family, I just talk to myself. In fact, I'm actually talking to my other my, I'm talking to my, my, well, my children, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, my great 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 great. In other words, this stuff will exist someplace, and somebody in my lineage might pick it up and say, "I wonder what this guy was about." They say, "Whoa, I'm just like that." See, that's how it goes, right? But here's the other thing I'm advocating now. All you old people, you ain't got nothing to do anyway. You got these devices, you know, phones and recorders, whatever have you, cameras. You can start, you know, forget you, your children ain't going to listen to you anyway. Right? Go to your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren and start interviewing them, right? Then they're going to ask you questions. So, in fact, this whole process of people, talk, the families talking to each other and getting your lineage down, you know, recorded. I mean, you know, if we, too bad we ain't got stone tablets and we were still we have patience to, you know, tap thinking on stone because that'll last a long time. This this stuff will degrade or whatever have you trying to get in a little bunch of places. Don't matter. My point is, come on, man. Let's let everybody talk to each other. Talk talk to your I I, I hesitate to say, say family, but talk to your lineage is what I'm trying to say. Okay? Do that. It'll it'll help you. Just a little suggestion from me, T from the Patterson's taking the train to bed, letting you know what I only suspect.